Now that we've added authentication and authorization to our GraphQL server with Hot Chocolate, we've also started to track users in our application. So for example, whenever a user creates a course, we take the ID of that user and save it in this creator ID field on our courses. So this data eventually gets saved to the database, but we really only save it to the database. We never actually use it. So for example, setting up this courses query, if we look at the fields we can query for, there's no option for the creator of the course. So that is what we are gonna add. And we're gonna get the creator of the course by using that course ID that we saved to the database. So the course creator, that's gonna be a user. So let's go ahead and create a user type in our GraphQL schema. So this is gonna be on the query side of things. So we have a course type, instructor type. Let's add a user type. So create that class user type. And our users are made up of an ID, a username, I believe an email, and also if their email is verified. But the only fields that I wanna expose for the client to query for are the user's ID, and I believe this is a string actually not formatted as a good and the username. So I don't want to expose details about the user's email and all that. So not going to include those properties. And now if we move over to our course query type, this is now going to have another property, which is going to be our user type that we just created. And this is going to be the creator. So the user that created the course and we'll hook all this up later. But for now, let's just hard code a value just to make sure that our query works. So we'll instantiate a new user type and set a random ID and a random username. So just hard coding data and this is what we should get back from our query. So in banana cake pop, let's refresh the schema and take a look at our courses query and we can now query for this creator. And this also has some fields, an ID and a username which are the properties that we just added to our user type. So let's query for that and we should get back all of our hard-coded data. So now all we have to do is make this not hard-coded data. So the first thing we have to do is grab the creator ID from the database. So actually on our course type, we're gonna add another property for creator ID. So let's add that. Again, gonna be a string, just the creator ID. And then since our courses query is using projections, we're also gonna have to make sure that we always project this creator ID property. And I talk about this more in my video on projections. So be sure to check that out if you're unsure about this. But if you're not using projections, then no need to include this. But anyways, while we're here, we can get rid of this hard coded ID and just grab the creator ID from this property. And if we want to do this, we're probably gonna have to open this up into a method so that we can access that creator ID property. So let's open that up. And for now, all we're going to do is return a new user type. The ID is going to be our creator ID, and then still going to be hard coding the username for now. So we should be good in our course type. Let's head back up to our queries. And now we just need to make sure that we grab the creator ID from our course DTO from the database and set it on our course type. And if all this mapping is confusing, no worries. I'll walk through this in just a little bit. But the last thing I want to do before we test this out is actually get rid of this courses query that uses our courses repository. And we're just gonna consolidate everything to this paginated courses query. So let's just get rid of this and rename this to get courses. So this is now our courses query. And I will admit, this is a breaking schema change. So definitely don't do this if you've released your GraphQL server to production and you have client application to expect those queries that we just deleted. But let's go ahead and run this and we'll walk through what's going on. So we did just change our schema. Let me go ahead and reload this. And now our courses query has pagination on it. So we're gonna have to open this up and dig into the nodes. And each node is a course which has a creator. And again, just querying for the ID and username again. Let's go ahead and run this. So here we go. Gonna use our entity framework DB context to query for courses and then map those course DTOs to our GraphQL course type. And now we're also mapping this creator ID. So if we continue, we're now in the creator resolver of our course type. And as we can see, the creator ID is actually null. And I think that's because creator ID is a new column in our database. So we did create courses before we actually had a creator ID. So some of these are gonna be null. Let's see if we can find one that is not null. And we should be able to see that 
by looking at the result of our query. Ah, uh, looks like they're all null. Maybe we haven't created a course yet. Oh, and also these courses are paginated. So let's just query for a really big page size, like the first 50 so that we get all of them back. And here we go, these last three. So these were created after we added the creator ID column. And as you can see, they actually have a creator ID. So we're good on the first part, actually getting the ID of the user from the database. Now we need to actually use that ID to get the user's profile so that we can figure out what their username is. And that's all gonna happen inside of this creator resolver. And for now, I'm gonna do this inside the resolver, but after that, we're gonna move it into a data loader so that's more efficient. So if you're not aware, our user IDs actually represent Firebase users. So we're gonna be using Firebase authentication to query for the user, and that's gonna allow us to get their username. So that's gonna be in our Firebase admin package, and we have this auth namespace, and we're gonna grab this Firebase auth class, and for now, we can just use the default instance. So that's gonna use the Firebase app that we initialize in our startup.cs. And there's a method on here, get user async. That's what we're looking for. And ta-da, that takes in the user's ID, which we have in this creator ID property. And this is also async. So let's go ahead and make our method async, return a task for our user type. And now we can await this. Let's also trim this down and just import Firebase auth. And ultimately this gives us back a user record. So let's get that into a variable. That's just gonna be our user. And on this user type, we can grab the user's display name. And let's see, we can also grab the folder URL of the user. I think that could be useful to return. So let's create a new property for that. And it's gonna hold the user's photo URL. So let's generate that on our user type. And there we go, that looks good. And let's just plop a breakpoint right here and see how this looks actually. I'm not sure this method is gonna like our creator ID being null, which is gonna be the case for the courses that don't have a creator ID. So let's just see what happens. If it errors out, we can just add a little guard before we hit that method. So here we go. And here we go, creator ID is not null, so these should work. And yeah, it looks like we were getting this argument exception when the creator ID was null. So I guess I kind of expected that, but let's just add a little guard here. So if the creator ID is null, then we're just gonna have to return null. So let's try this again and execute. And there we go, it looks like it worked. So for the courses that don't have a creator ID, we just got null, but for the ones where we did, we return the creator except the username is null for all of these. And I think that's actually because I haven't configured a display name for my account. But if we actually put a breakpoint here, we should be able to see, and I will admit, this has been really slow lately. But here we go, we get our user back, and here it is, I have my email, I just don't have a display name, and I also don't have a photo URL. So those are gonna have to be null for now, but it looks like we are successfully querying for our users. So next up, let's move these get user queries to a data loader. And the reason I want to do that is because if I run this, I hit this get user async once and twice and three times. And if I had a bunch of courses I was querying for, then I could be hitting this get user async query, I don't know, hundreds of times really. So ideally I would batch all of the get user queries into one request to Firebase, which is going to be much more scalable. And the reason we can batch these get user queries is because this Firebase auth instance actually has a get users async, so to get many users, and we can pass in many user identifiers and get back many users. And ultimately, we're only gonna be making one request to Firebase. The only issue we're gonna run into is that we can only send a maximum of 100 identifiers, so we are gonna have to configure our data loader just a little bit. But anyways, let's head into our data loaders folder and we're gonna add another data loader. This will be the user data loader. And we're batching a bunch of user requests to Firebase. So we're gonna be doing a batch data loader again. And I say again, because we do already have this instructor data loader that I demoed earlier in the series. So similar approach here. We're gonna have to specify the key type for our users. So in this case, the key is the user ID, which is a string. And the value represented by these keys is gonna be our user type. And actually for separation of concerns, I feel weird having our data loader's namespace 
reference our GraphQL schema. I feel like our schema should reference our data loader. So that's kind of backwards. So ideally, instead of using this user type, maybe we would have a user class that would refer to our domain layer or maybe even a user DTO. But I think for simplicity, I am just going to roll with referencing our schema. So let's just go ahead and import that and let's implement this abstract class, which adds this load batch async method, which is gonna hold our batching logic. And we're also gonna have to add a constructor here. And there are some other things I wanna inject into this data loader specifically. I want my Firebase app. So this will be the instance that we register in our startup.cs with Firebase app create. And then I'm gonna use this Firebase app to get a Firebase auth instance. And that's gonna go into a field so that we can query for Firebase users. So this is Firebase auth, import that, throw it in a field. And we're gonna initialize this in the constructor using Firebase auth. And we're gonna get auth for our Firebase app instance. And now we're ready to do the batching. So we're gonna need this to be a sync. So our batch method gets the IDs of all the users in this keys parameter. So I'm just gonna rename this to user IDs. And now let's take Firebase auth and let's get users. So users with an S async, getting many users. And this takes a collection of user identifiers. So let's map our user IDs to user identifiers. And specifically we want this UID identifier because we have user IDs. And all we have to pass in here is the user's ID. And then of course select returns an enumerable and get users async once a read only collection. So we can just do a little to list at the end of our link. And I feel like I should probably extract this to a variable so that this is all a bit more clear. So these are the user identifiers. And now we're gonna have to await this to get our get users result. So let's await that. And last but not least, we have to return a dictionary that maps the user ID to the user that we got back from Firebase. So for that, we can dig into this users result and grab the users that were found. So that's in this users property. And let's just map that to a dictionary. And the key for that dictionary is gonna be the user's ID, I believe UID. Oh, and actually before we map to a dictionary, we should map the Firebase users to our user type. So let's go ahead and do that. So select our users, our Firebase users to user types and map all the properties. So the UID, the username is gonna be the user's display name and the photo URL will be the user's photo URL. And now the key for our dictionary is gonna be this ID property instead. And now we should be good to go actually. So we got our user data loader all set up. Let's go ahead and register this in dependency injection. So in our startup.cs, let's add another scope service. This will be the user data loader. And now in our course type, in our creator resolver, let's actually get the user data loader injected as a service here. And instead of doing the query here, let's just use our data loader. So grab that data loader and we are going to load a user. And all we have to do is pass in the user's ID, which in our case is gonna be the creator ID. And we also have to pass in a cancellation token. Let's just pass in cancellation token none and let's await this result. And let's actually put a breakpoint in our user data loader. And let's make sure that we only hit this once so that we're only hitting Firebase for our users one time. So execute this query. We hit our breakpoint. Let's continue. And finally hit this breakpoint. Let's look at our user's result. So we found our single user and that is my account. So we only hit this breakpoint once. So if we continue, we won't hit this again and we get our users back. So it looks like our data loader is working. And actually one more important thing we have to do in our data loader, as we recall, this Firebase auth get users async has a maximum of 100 identifiers. So let's say our data loader receives 1000 user IDs. Well, then we're gonna get this argument exception if we try and query Firebase for all of those users, and then we're not gonna be able to get any users. So what we can do is we can pass some data litter options to this base batch data litter. So let's instantiate data litter options. And all we wanna do on these is set the max batch size. In this case, it's gonna be 100. Let me put it into a const. We'll call this max Firebase users batch. 
size and throw that into a field and the value is going to be 100 and this can actually just be a const and now we don't need this options parameter here because we're defining options directly inside of this class and unfortunately i don't think we have a way to test this because we don't have 100 users that we can query for but the batch data loader should handle that behavior and who knows once our app grows bigger maybe we'll be able to test it so we should be all good here before i summarize the last thing i forgot to do is make sure that we map our creator id in our course by id query so make sure we map that from our course dto so it should be good here for the course by id query and we'll walk through that as we summarize so let's start this up so let me just grab a course id real quick that actually has a creator and now we're going to do a course by id query the id of the course let's paste that in let's query for the course name as well as the creator and the creator id and the username is going to be null so we just leave that out i guess so let's run this so we get our course from the database that course has a creator id and then in our query we queried for the creator so we hit this resolver our creator id is not null so we're going to head into our user data loader and load this user represented by the creator id so now assuming we're querying for multiple courses in that query we're batching all these firebase user ids into a request to firebase to get many users so let's do that we get our users back we only queried for one user but here we go got that and we return that from the query ran out of time let me run this again and there we go we get the creator including their id and if i had a username on this creator we'd be able to query for that too and i believe also photo url but I think all those are null, which sadly they are. But anyways, I hope you can apply this to your own GraphQL server with hot chocolate. Even if you're not using Firebase for user authentication, it would still make sense to store the user's ID in a database column and then create a data loader to batch requests for all of the users for many IDs. Anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.